Now we look ahead to Super Bowl 59. Yes, the lines are out for Super Bowl 59. All right. 49ers are the favorite at plus 500. I would not do that. Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs at plus 650. I would take that. Dude. I'm interested in, in, in the Bears. I need to see what they do with this number one overall pick. The Odds Couple with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, John Roser, and CJ Hurt live Thursdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine-free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip-hop could be hop hip. Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. Um, ten feet ahead of you, catch me is something you'll never do. I turn around and I level you. No motivation is needed. Look, I put myself on the pedestal. This is incredible. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Why does nobody want to talk about my new hair? The amount of times I have trimmed, shaved, lined up, and cut completely off my hair with no fanfare, it's different. no reaction. It's, it's, it's different. hair. It's Jessica, it's different. hair. You don't have any. That doesn't count. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Let's face it, there's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board, a class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Class is full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to help us reshape the steel industry for a more sustainable tomorrow. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. That's www.bigriversteel.com backslash join to join our dash team. Justin Timberlake. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single, Selfish, is available to stream and download now. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. 
Elevate your hotel experience in the heart of downtown Memphis at the West End Memphis Beale Street. Our AAA Four Diamond Hotel boasts spacious guest rooms and suites, refreshed meeting space, upscale dining, and more. Just steps away from the sights and sounds of Beale Street, FedEx Forum, and the Memphis Rock and Soul Museum. After a full day of work or play, retreat to your hotel room or suite featuring luxury bedding, a contemporary bathroom, a spacious workstation, complimentary coffee, and a flat screen TV. During downtime, you can take advantage of perks such as our on-site fitness center, 24-hour business center, and upscale dining at Penny's Nitty Gritty. On your next visit to downtown Memphis, make the West in Memphis Beale Street Hotel your home away from home. Live from downtown Memphis, this is the Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Chris Vernon. Media.com. It's Chris Farnage. Show. Welcome, 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 welcome. It is the Wednesday, March 13th, 2024 edition of the show. Today on the show, Hoops for St. Jude continues. We'll tell you what all is going on with that. In conjunction with that, Carmion Hamilton from HGTV is going to come in studio with us. She is a star on HGTV and is playing in the celebrity basketball game at halftime tonight on Team Tony. Gary Parrish is going to join us on the show. Jessica Benson is going to join us in studio. She does on Wednesday. So we are filled up. We will get to all the news and notes of the day. Grizzlies got a win last night, a rare home win, as I was talking about a winning team on that postgame show last night for... Only like the seventh time all year. So that was nice. Wizards might be the most disgusting team I've ever seen in my life. We'll get to that too. Let's do it. Turn it up! having a good day all right we got a ton of stuff to get to on the show hoops for st jude continues want to encourage everybody to go to grizzlies.com slash st jude and as you know every hour if you are part of the uh, donators on grizzlies.com slash st jude they're giving away prizes uh, different prizes every hour that you will be entered to win tonight there's going to be a big to do at the game uh, with Team Zebo and Team TA playing against each other. And uh, if you donate to one of those teams, you will be entered to win a special edition Gold Grizzlies basketball autographed by the participating celebrities. One of those celebrities, Carmion Hamilton from HGTV, is going to join us in studio uh, here in a little bit. But we'll tell you more about what's going on with Hoops for St. Jude. Uh, and we will talk to all manner of people today on the show. Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Band, the Sinor Sack, a.k.a. John the Back Clothes, John the Bear Cat, a.k.a. the Grim Roser, John Asparagus, Johnny Neckard, John Lance, a.k.a. Yogi Roser. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Devin Walker's here. He is the microphone mangler. Senor Quasadilla. Mr. Math. Navo Joe. The reporter and the photographer. He is Sir Hiss. We're in the building today, boys. We're in the building today, boys. Yeah, Gary Paris is here in studio with us because we typically have him at the end of the week, but I was alerted earlier this week. Once when he texted me and another time when one of our buddies texted the group about playing golf and Gary said, I am gone every weekend 
until after college basketball is over. We were like, what? Yeah. 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 You're going, it really begins. I guess I know Selection Sunday is Sunday, but then – you are not you. You won't even be here when the tournament is here. Mm-mm. I haven't been to an NCAA tournament game in like 15 years. Wait, and you cover the sport? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I haven't been to an NCAA tournament game in like 15 years. I I went. To, is that, that true? Yeah. Well, you go to the final four though, right? I don't, I don't go to the games. Wait, we sit on a set right outside. Oh hell no! I that should be a perk of it. You ready for this? I went to one college basketball game all year. What? Did what? you didn't have to do sidelines or anything? I didn't do any side. We have so many sideline reporters now. Ah. Uh, yeah, they got place. They really got what game did you go you to? The CBS Sports Classic, uh, Kentucky, North Carolina. Oh, I guess that's the one. That's a good one. Was that an aircraft carrier? No, I was in uh, Atlanta. Oh, I was in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Oh. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't go to games anymore. I just that's sit in the studio crazy. and talk. So for the next few weeks, it'll be. Fly on, fly on Wednesday, yeah. in studio Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, home on Monday, back on Wednesday, in studio Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, home on Monday, back on Wednesday, I think then you're at the final Jeez four. Louise. It's basically, it's, it's New York, New York, New York, yeah. and then Phoenix, and then I'm going to burn my seat case, and I'm going to start dropping putts on you. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, well, well, hold on a second now. Are they... um. So what do you the, the thing that I care about yeah. and you, you may not know your TV schedule is you know they do that selection show yeah. that goes on on, on on big CBS and then are y'all going to be doing one of those things where <laughs> yeah. like the rest of the night you're just yes. talking about the bracket so, cuz that's the show I watch yeah, every year. Yeah, that's fun. Um, we and thank you. We will I think selection toast 5 Central on CBS and then at 6 Central. So as soon as it's over, we go live CBS Sports Network 3-hour show. And it'll be all of us. Everybody you see on CBS will just come, like that Studio 44. Yeah. And then we're Studio 43 right across the hall. Everybody will come from there over here. And it's just like a huge round table. A big thing. We'll have coaches on. It'll be like, and hey, now join us live on Zoom. It's Kelvin Sampson. Join us live on Zoom. It's Hubert Davis. You know, right. we'll have coaches come in and. It's just, you know, it's three hours of just talking about the bracket. It's fun. Yeah, once it gets announced, that's all I want to do is hear Lit. people talking about yeah. it, hear people talk about how, oh, this is dangerous and this is dangerous and, oh, not the matchup you wanted or who's got the hardest, you know, road to get there to the Final Four. Yeah, it's always a fun show. Like, uh, Amy Salmonson produces it for us, and she's, like, you know, she's planning a three-hour show with – guests dropping in and it's it's kind it's a lot going on a lot of moving pieces but it's a it's always a fun night like you get the bracket and then we talk about it for three hours and then you uh, you know go back to your hotel and you podcast for another it's one of those nights yeah. but it's fun it's yeah. a good time of the year no i'm excited like selection sunday's right around the corner yeah. and all these conference championships are going on um i we we mentioned yesterday while we're talking about the, all these college games that are going on we mentioned yesterday on the show that I said there are these four teams, or I guess uh, over the weekend, right? We mentioned Moorhead and some of the other teams that had gotten in. But Stetson, yeah. our old guy, Donnie Jones, <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Are there any of those that you know of offhand that are like, you remember, remember when uh, Mike Davis showed up at yeah. one of the Texas schools, like maybe Texas San Antonio or right. somebody like that? Like, is there any of the, or Texas Southern, right. I think it was. Um, are there any of those like the Stetsons where I'm going to look up and be like, holy crap. Oh, yeah, tonight. Who? McNeese State. Who? Oh, Will Wade. Oh, Will Wade. Oh, Will Wade. Yeah, we're talking about of him. course he's got players. And they're good as hell, too. Dude. Well, of course. Are they oh, for this? Yeah. Yeah, of course well, they of course are. They hey, are. no one has ever questioned Will Wade's <laughs> ability to get players. Will Wade, and this is why Kenny Payne like is insane. <laughs> like last night, still talking I about saw it. His it comments. takes three or four years. What? Will, Will Wade got the McNeese State job in March. He's twenty nine and three. Dude. He's twenty nine and three. He's in his conference tournament championship game tonight. He's a sixteen point favorite. Like, Dude, twenty nine and three. Twenty nine and three. Are they like legitimately like are the three like they played against Houston and got beat by fifty no, it's, or it's something? Like the three, I mean, the I three, haven't looked at yeah, them. It's, it's they they have beaten like the best win really might be UAB, okay. VCU, the Dre Jemison, UAB Blazers. But they are, you know, 
Because I saw one like that the other night where it was one of those guys on TikTok, and I'm, I'm watching as many TikToks yeah. as I can before we can't anymore. So, right. But yeah. I was scrolling. By the way, that's, I, that is the lamest thing ever. The before. worst. Yeah, happening like, you know the how much worst. information we get from TikTok? Tons. I think that's part of the problem, Dan. <laughs> zero. So here, zero for me. You got a point. You. Yeah. You, got a point. you got a point. So here's the thing. I was watching this, and one of those guys is giving like his free pick, and it was like, look, he, th- this guy was brilliant. I can't remember who he was. But he says, he got my attention on the video because he says, Vegas is going to lose millions on this game. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I mean, I have to watch this. I have to watch this video, right? And then he, like, drags it out so that I'm watching for, like, 45 seconds or whatever. And then he's like, I invite you. Go look at their schedule. San Francisco has beaten absolutely nobody, and yet it's a two and a half <laughs> point line against Gonzaga. And I'm like, oh wow. I was like, maybe they really are like and so he gave this like very persuasive case. Right. The issue was, I'm like, oh hell, I'm gonna go bet that. I didn't see the video until the next day. Oh, the, game, no. the game had been the night before and right. Gonzaga beat him by but, double yeah, digits. Beat, beat him back, right. The guy was actually right. Yeah. I don't know if Vegas lost millions. <laughs> That's why, why they're trying to shut down TikTok, bro. <laughs> <laughs> People like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fan duel yeah. cut down TikTok. Yeah, yeah like, yo. Big, big Vegas. <laughs> big, big Vegas is eliminating TikTok. Like, yo, what's going on? Oh, so, so, get rid of this guy. So, yeah. Will Wade, McNeese State, yeah. for some context, they're 63rd at Ken Palm. Okay. Which means that... If McNeese State played Memphis today on a neutral court, they would be favored over the Tigers. Stop. I mean, that's just the truth. That's is a, it the truth? That's annoying. No, that is the truth. Hey, but, but okay, let me stand up for Penny here. Okay. He's not Kenny Payne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, exactly. took, Kenny Payne took over Louisville, and I when I read last night that they had 12 wins in two years, I was like, that is like a horrible Memphis season would be like 500. Yes. Like 16, like when Toby went 16 and 15 or it whatever, whatever the hell he went, it was like, this is rock bottom. Well, you say things like, he really might be the worst high major hire in the history of college basketball. And somebody will say, Damn. well, what about Billy Gillespie at Kentucky? Billy Gillespie went to an NCAA <laughs> tournament. 12 wins in two years? At Louisville. Four, at Louisville is nasty. Bro, four I thought they were going to say it was a 12-win year, and right they were now. like, he has 12 wins they, in the last two years. No, I'm like, two years? They won four last season. They went 4-28. and 28 How? Last, it's impossible to do. <laughs> it's impossible. They went 4-28 and 28 last season and 8-24 and 24 this season. Last season, they finished 300 and I think it was – I want to make sure I've got it right. 314th in the net. I'm not – I'm not exaggerating. I'm not joking around. I swear to God, if you just handed me the Louisville program, you could have won 12 yes. games with a blindfold. I, I would agree finish with that. in the top 300. Yeah. I, agree I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I swear to God, I think I could do it. Yes. You have to be completely ill-equipped to do the job. I think Ray Charles could do it. Dude. I, I'm not like I think anybody could yeah. do. It. I, I am. Sh- this this is how. So we agree. By Penny's standard, he has done. Amazing. Oh, we're it, just comparing him to Kenny Payne. If you, if you, okay. <laughs> Maybe Penny. Two guys that took over historically okay. proud programs. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Memphis fans, you want to feel better about yourself? <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Because like, that's what it could be. And that what look when I when I first moved here, oh, yeah. I worked every day with Jack Eaton, and Jack Eaton would routinely say. If Louisville played against the Russians, I'd root for Russia, which is a, which is now even a crazier thing to say. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he still might. Yeah. He might. He still probably God, re- God rest his soul. I'm going to have to have William Instagram RIP Jack Eaton today. Yeah, you're going to have to, for sure. <laughs> what, if, what, if, what if Jack Eaton was like, down with you, Craig? Yeah. Down with you, Craig? He was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> that dude said if we if the Louisville was playing the Russians, I'd root for Russia. He hates Louisville so oh, much he, he hated invade him. Ukraine. But it is crazy it's to see that work. now. It is crazy to see no, to like what up, Louisville has become. Do you is have bananas? I mean, it is it, like I, I can't overstate how impossible it is, or it should be, to finish outside of the top three hundred. Oh my god. Like think about the, the awful Tubby Smith thing. He was still, Tubby Smith was at Ken Palm, 101 in year one and 161 in year two. And that felt like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kenny Payne was like twice as bad. Jeez. It's unbelievable. That and, is... and for him last night talking about, I told you all at the beginning, it takes three or four years. First for off, what? 
First off, the Louisville media, like, fact-checking, they're like, no, you didn't. You never said that. <laughs> <laughs> they called him a cat. We've got every press conference on fire. Yeah, these these like, Louisville reporters, they're like, dude, we were here. <laughs> we were here. <laughs> and what you actually said, because somebody said, like, how good, you know, it's the introductory press conference. And so, so they were like, we actually asked this dude, how good do you think you could be in year one? And you said... If we get these two guys we're involved with, we're going to be really good. Dude. And now he's like, it's going to take three or four years. Danny Sprinkle, who you never heard of. No. That's a crazy last name. Took yeah. a Utah State job that you've never heard of. Yeah. And has it, and, and oh, by the way, returned zero players who scored a point for Utah State last season. I'm talking about inherited nothing at Utah State. In year one, they're, they won their league, and they're in the top it's 20. The, 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 it's oh, a, do, do not say we have not heard of Utah State. That's our guy, Bean. Yeah, hey, Justin Bean. Justin Bean. Bean. Click the Bean. Sam Merrill. Click the Bean. Yeah, Bean. Stop acting like they ain't got history. Yeah, we got, we got yeah. the lineage over here. Let's go. Come on, bro. Shout out Utah State. We know Utah State. Yeah, we familiar. I, I apologize. Yeah, come on Chucky now. Chucky Keaton. Who was the, bur- hey, what, no, what was Bean's burrito commercial? Oh, yeah. It he was had, like the had, NIL deal with a burrito place. Yeah, he had. it was a taco place. And you could go and get the bean, <laughs> you get the bean burrito. Shut I, our, love, I love, and he's like sitting there eating. It's crazy. Shout out our boy Bean, man. Crazy. Taco Just, time. Taco time. Like if you you can't sit there and say it takes three or four years when Danny Sprinkle I know. he's doing what he's doing at Utah State. Well, no, this is the beard thing at, at Little Rock, right? <laughs> Yes. Right. Yes. Chris Beard did it at Little Except, Rock. Except, like, I think Chris Beard did it at Little Rock because he's just special. Yeah. I, I think in this era of college basketball, at a play, you ready for this? With the transfer waivers mm-hmm. and NIL, you can flip it around quick. In a month yeah. at Louisville. Yeah. You ready for If they hire the right guy at Louisville, whoever that is, because they're going to give him a big paycheck and then tons of NIL money. Yep. They're going to say, go buy your team. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, because they got money out the wazoo, and, they're, and they are fed up. They're fed up. Yeah. Oh, the next coach. So now whoever the, walks in if the is going to have a bag. If the next coach comes in and says, I need $2 million to go get yeah. um, David Jones from Memphis. And they're going to say, I'm tired of this. They'll, they'll, somebody's going to say, here's $2 million, go get David Jones from the Memphis. The Kenny Payne thing is so reminiscent of Larry. Here, yeah, yeah, Larry it, Porter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like it, amazing it's exact, guy. It's the same thing. Amazing it guy, amazing same. recruiter, wildly ill-equipped to be the it, head coach. It is literally like the best comp. Yeah. Uh, uh, alum, amazing recruiter, one of the best assistants in the country. That's right. Cannot run your program. That's right. That's what Kenny Payne is. That's what Larry Porter was. But the next – here's what I said this morning on the Island College Basketball Podcast. If they hire the right guy, Louisville will be preseason top 25 next year. Yep. If they hire the right guy, because you can build the roster overnight. Who, who, who are they going to go after? <laughs> the, the big one, like, they're going to Because it sounds like the guy from Florida Atlantic, that, that Indiana's not going to be firing Woodson, right? Right. So that's out. At least it appears so. Ohio State, probably going that way for Dusty May, which is why Indiana should fire Woodson. Yeah. You don't want to let your conference rival get the guy. That's right. That, is gonna, that should be your next great thing. But whatever. They can do what they want. Um, the big name you hear is Scott Drew. Oh. I don't know that he. I don't know that he would do it. That he would finally leave Baylor. I wouldn't. I mean, listen. I don't tell other people what to do with their careers because I wouldn't want somebody telling me. Yeah. But man, I would think. I would think twice. Just leave well enough alone. So there. Any, so we had Donnie Jones. We had, as you mentioned, Will Wade. Right. We actually, when we looked up something, I don't know if his team made the tournament or not, but Bryce Drew. Was it somewhere oh, that Grand was Grand Canyon, right? Grand yeah, Canyon, Grand Canyon. In Phoenix. Oh, Are they he, still he, in it? Yeah. Well, he's another one who's like they're. Uh, I keep, but we see him and we're like. Oh my God, Bryce Drew yeah. coaches them. Yeah, yeah they're, they're twenty-seven and four. They're always so good. Damn. Bro. Yeah. Every so like, year. so like, he had that one bad year at Vanderbilt. That's right. They go zero and eighteen in the league. Darius yeah. Garland got hurt. That's what happened. Yep. And uh, the, then they, they don't win a game. They fire him. They're like, we can't have that. Now look at Vanderbilt I and know. look at where Bryce Drew is. They should have just kept Bryce Drew. Yeah. There's a lesson in there. Like, you know, don't get all trigger happy just because somebody had a bad year because their best player got hurt. It's like, probably because football was good at the same time, too. Like, Franklin had gotten that football. Yeah, yeah they're thinking they're something they're not. Yeah, right. Don't and, you think? Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but, like, Bryce is at Grand Canyon. They're 55th at Ken Palm, 27-4. and four. They will probably be in the NCAA tournament. they got to they got to probably win their conference tournament mm, just because yeah. the what nature. Are, what are, outside of Louisville, what are the other jobs that are – what are the other bigger jobs that are open right now? Um, well, right now it's Ohio State, Louisville, some other big ones that could, Florida State could open because of retirement. Um, what, did the Ohio State coach ever go somewhere else? He is not hired yet. Thad Mata? Oh, yeah, he's at Xavier. Oh, Thad Mata's at Xavier, but no, the other guy. Uh, Sean Holt, Holt, uh, Holtman? Huh? Chris Holtman? Yeah, yeah, Holtman. He, he's still, he's, I think he'll get back in if he wants to. 
He just wasn't hired. Yeah. He just had. He just didn't click at Ohio State. Yeah. He's a good coach though. Yeah. Um, Washington is open. Um, and then there's good, there's always dominoes. Like, okay, let's. Uh, well, Where's the guy that used to be at Washington, Lorenzo? <laughs> I Wasn't think, it Lorenzo I think, Romo? Yeah, I think Romo. He, yeah, he's out now. Oh, he's gone yeah, now. But he landed another like a Pepperdine job, one of those type of yeah. like West Coast Conference jobs, and the move around. Got put, yeah. Um. So the the next one will be like uh, West Virginia just opened today officially. So it'll be like. Oh yeah, I saw our old buddy Rem Baker's right. statement that they put out, and they're going right? to go after Dusty May too. But I think if you could pick between Ohio State, West Virginia, you take Ohio State. Um, you think anybody will ever hire Huggins again? You don't think he can sit out for a year and everybody just forgets about it? That's a lot to forget about. I know. <laughs> um, I don't know that. He's also got like 800 wins. Yeah. You know what I mean? at, at his age. Are guys like that just done done? I think he's probably done done. You know he wants to coach. I don't think he liked going out like that. I haven't talked to him. I, I like I. It's sad how all that ended. I don't know. Because I, I like him a lot. I can't defend what he said or did. or. All yeah. he would have to do is say I got help. Yeah, that's the way. And I don't know if he did get help, but all he had to say it, is well, I did get I was, help. Right. I got help. Look, my life spiraled out of control. Right. I do not drink anymore. I got help. Things are different. And I am a basketball coach. And I realized that not only was my career taken away from me, my health has been taken away from yeah. me, too. And I'm going to get it right. And everybody would be like, oh, what a new redemption story. Yeah. Yeah. No, for I sure. mean, you can pull it off. A hundred percent you can. Um, it's, and, not, it's not like you killed someone. And and people would want to forgive him because people do like him. Yeah. Like if you knew Bob Huggins, you would really like him. He's smart and funny. And Oh, I, I did meet him one night. And, and by the way, he was hammered. Yeah. And <laughs> I was with you, oh, yeah. and I, I had had him, Roser had booked him several times. He'd come on our show many times. Great guest through the years because he was big buddies with Cal Perry. Right. So when we would play against Cincinnati, I would book him. And I finally met him, and you were like, hey, this is my buddy Chris Vernon. And he looks at me, and he is he's a, a big person. seriously physically intimidating human. Yes, he's a big human. guy. Like tall, Very tall. and huge. Yeah. And... Uh, He's just sweating. We're in San Antonio. This year, the yeah. Final Four. And he goes, you're Chris Vernon? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And he goes, you're a fucking kid in front of everyone. I was like, damn. Nice to meet you, dude. Bob, Bob Huggins, Bob Huggins, Huggins is listed at 6'3", 265. Oh, like, but damn. Huggins is like, he's like one of those guys. No, you know, but he's fun as hell. It's the best. Like, we shut. The, like, it, it, and it, you know who else was there that night? Uh, Remember, we Greg got invited Marshall? to his house Greg to Marshall. drink moonshine. Yeah, Greg Marshall. Oh God, is he coaching? No, he's out. Nah, he Nowhere. Packed, Nowhere. They packed him up, bro. Yeah, they yeah, packed they him. Pack they him up. put him in the pack I and rolled him up. He just took his like twenty million dollars and said, "Gone, gone." Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna sit on my back porch and. Didn't he get all this wine. money for? Wasn't the the political guys? The Coke brothers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Yeah, they live are... in Wichita. Like, if you're driving well, through they Wichita. Just blew, they ain't, money ain't nothing then. They just no. blew $100 million on Nikki Haley. They did. You're driving they're, through. They're spending oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. mad money on Nikki Haley. Oh, yeah. Well, that's how they kept Greg Marshall. <laughs> like, he went to the Final Four, and it was like, how you keep him? Well, you've got two billionaires. Billionaires. Who live in Wichita, and they'll just be like. So they were like, "What do you need?" We're Greg Marshall's like, "I need three point three million. They're like, "Here, we gave we gave Nikki Haley a hundred. It doesn't yeah. matter." <laughs> so they pe- that's how they kept him. Anyway, you're driving through Wichita, and next thing you see, think about the Graceland Wall. How it's like the stone wall. Yeah. Except it just goes for like it feels like three miles. <laughs> and I'm like, "What <laughs> it's is his house?" It's the compound of the Koch brothers. Oh wow! So I'm, I'm with Greg, and I'm like, "What is going on here?" He's like, "That's where they live." <laughs> I'm like, just like blocked off. You're from not the, getting in there. He, I was like, you ever go there? He's like, I have to go about once a year just to pay my respects. <laughs> yeah, I said, I there. see. I see. Makes but yeah, sense. they're like wow. super, super, super so, wealthy. But those are, the, those are the big ones, right? Like, I, I yeah, guess yeah. Donnie, we were shocked. I was like, the guy from UCF? Yeah, yeah. And and Devin said the guy that, like, his best player at 45 yeah. in their sure. title game. So it's like, inevitably, somebody. Is going to be there like somebody's going to be like, hey, and watch out. You know, this guy had 45 in their title game. This guy may just do you in. It is interesting when you see like these guys on their last stops or they're, you know, they they got to, and you know, you get the drop back down. And there's a lot of those, and you'll see them in the NCAA tournament. And Will is probably the biggest example of that. And then. And so there'll be a popular one to catch oh, sure. a, a do and do an upset like, because somebody's going to hire him in a minute. People like, are going to be familiar with him. And then Will Wade's going to be a power conference coach. 
like again very soon. Oh, really? Well, why wouldn't you hire him? Yeah. Everything he did is now illegal. Mm. And you know that you don't even need a big NLL backing? Because, like, the thing with Will, he was coming out of his own pocket. Yeah, they real were coming one. out of his wife's bank account to pay players. Real have, one. That's, a, that's in, a real one right there. He buddy. his wife involved in the whole I, thing. I, I, and and, and, and in fairness to him, I've never heard of McNeese State basketball in my life. Dude, they, they, I've never heard oh, of that's it. That's the uh, Cowboys, right? I have I no mean, idea. Yeah. Yeah. I have never seen McNeese State play a basketball game. No, yeah, but they, now you he turned it? on and he's like, you no. know, it's a little bitty arena, but they pack it now and they're like, they're good. Come on, they're man. good. Oh, Tick Price coach there. Are they the, are they the Cowboys, oh Rosa? God, Am I right? right? Yeah, I am, Tick Price coach there. I, I'm right. Rufus. They're the Cowboys. Ha <laughs> ha. I tell you this. Uh, you don't know the most remedial uh, words or American <laughs> history, and yet you know every mascot in yes. Division One. That's random it's ass a, mascot. I got you. Cra- What's a St. Mary's? St. Mary's, they're the Gales, right? He yeah. knows all of them. <laughs> I told you, bro. Okay. What, is, what is Grand Canyon? <laughs> Grand Canyon, they're the, they're the uh, they're not the Jackrabbits. They're the, not the Catamounts. They're the. Uh, you're on it. You're on it. I'm on it. Uh, dang it! What is it? Ah. Uh, I don't got that. What is it? Greyhounds? They are the Jesus. What I just are they? I just erased it. I forgot. What is it? The an- is it the antelopes? Antelopes? Oh, they're the antelopes. Man, I was close. Tough. Tough. I was close. You don't know what a Quinnipiac is? I don't even know what. That's a school. Oh no 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 no! Actually wait wait wait. They're not the Bobcats, are they? they are the Let's go! Put respect on my name. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. We might need to put respect I'm, on his I'm name. I'm telling you, look, put look, no goggle. Look, I got the chat up. Yeah. You say no you goggle. No goggle, bro. Hey, all right. So, hey, uh, before we get you out of here, I do have to ask you, and I will tell you that uh, you have become known amongst many people, and I resent this, mm. as the foremost college basketball trivia master in the world for the performance you put on at the Grizzly game. <laughs> that was amazing. That was I, amazing. I, I was, swear I to God, Brevin Knight asked me the other night, how does he know all that <laughs> stuff? <laughs> I said, bro, they gave him the answers. He's you know, like, oh, they did? He's like, yo, my homeboy, he texted me and was like, this dude is a genius. <laughs> no, no, you know who's I'm like, dude, that, if you remember that night, I was yeah, like, I said, do you really thought he knew the exact amount of steals that – Jacob Gilliard had. <laughs> I tell you, that whole story was, I don't pay attention when people talk to me. <laughs> and so it's like, it's like uh, Jenna's like, uh, so on this Saturday night, are you going to be in town? I'm like, yeah, I'll be in town. She's like, would you do this thing? And I'm like, yeah. And then she starts telling me about it, and I forget. And then I just stop yep. listening. And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Just text me. And uh, so then she's like, I think they're asking me to be a trivia master. Gotcha. And then she's like, uh, do you want the answers in advance? And I said, yeah, of course, so I don't look stupid. And then I get there, and they're like, all right, so it's you and Bennett against these two fellas. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> so I already got mean. all the answers. <laughs> so yeah. I was just like, Bennett, I got this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm going to hit the buzzer every yeah, time. I love how you played it off, too. He'll be like, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, gonna, like uh, according uh, to like the. My acting chops. Yeah, yeah. he my played there for chops. five yeah. years. So, so according to that number. So, and, so that I was night, like, okay. I was wearing a like a pretty yellow Grizzlies hoodie. <laughs> I was pretty like. Ain't a lot of people walking around in solid yellow. No, that's right. So I'm walking around with my little guy, like halftime, whatever, and co- like every 10 steps, somebody be like, GP, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like thanks, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who yeah. really does know that stuff? Rothstein. John Rothstein. I totally believe yeah, that. Yeah, I'd not be surprised. I mean, I'm telling you, like, we can have Roy Hibbert in studio, oh, and he'll yeah. be like, Roy, you remember your sophomore year, the third game of the season, you were playing as a bye game against oh Iona. <laughs> I'm not John, freaking nervous. Like you can really right now be like, John, 2007 NCAA tournament, Michigan State second round. He'd be like, Seton Hall, 84-78. Like, I'm not joking. <laughs> he knows. He, his brain keeps track of all That's that stuff. wild. In ways that I don't even. Wow. All right, so here is, yeah. the, here is a trivia question. Or here's a question for you. I'll, I'll ask it as trivia to see if you are truly the trivia okay, master. Yeah. Last night, one of the standouts for the Grizzlies yeah. was, of course, Trey Jemison. Sure. But one of the other standouts was our guy, Deke Jero. Deke Jero played at Houston. Of course. Right? Fantastic team. Deke, and, and <laughs> during the. First qu- off, when did he become that? Deke? Yeah. So I think he called. I think the, he, this is what his family called him. Yeah, I, I think I that's what he kind of yeah. like did it by himself. Okay, we didn't do that at Houston. Deaky, yeah. yeah. Jero. Well, he probably Kevin Sampson won't with him. And, and probably, you probably because he doesn't want everybody to Google Dijon Jero. Right. Which 
Roser happened to do last night oh, and yes. found out that Deke Giroux was ejected from a college basketball game. A big one, in fact. Houston versus Cincinnati. What did Deke Giroux Let's go. get ejected for? I don't remember this. We know the answer. We all three okay, know the I answer. Don't. I'm gonna and we even looked it up on YouTube. I hit somebody in the nuts. No. no. He bit someone. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he, he biting? On the leg. He bit him in the leg. He bit him in the leg. When's the last time you bit somebody? Yo. I mean, don't ask me that question. Yo. Okay, Dad. Yeah. Okay, Dad. Okay, Dad. This was it last night. Oh, we oh, let the liquor talk. talk. Yeah. yeah. Give me that earlobe. Yes. Okay. Give me that earlobe. Shout out to the neck, dog. Hey, what? Hey. <laughs> Roser said, Bro, it says that Dinky got kicked out of a college <laughs> game for biting someone and my immediate reaction was not what i go i believe it yes. <laughs> he, he strikes me exactly as like the a, kind of guy that would bite you i i he, bite, does. he definitely would bite you for biting it. is so funny oh my god because it never like i've never heard of that biting no <laughs> bite. that he could have listed all manner of things punching in the nuts yeah. all manner of things I have never heard of a guy getting kicked out of a basketball game. for Like, the only guy, if you ever say to me, it got thrown out of a game for biting someone, I still to this day think of Luis Suarez. You remember yeah. that, that soccer player? Oh, he stayed biting people. He would yeah, not stop biting people. He, he, he had him on the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, take a choke out, yeah. you, bro. Yeah. He biting Louis, I don't know. He's biting he, sh- shoulders is wild to Bro, bite. he led the league in scoring and didn't even play games. And then you're like, why didn't he play as many games? You're like, because he bit someone. He's spending like 10 games for biting someone. <laughs> Body. Yeah, but like, he like the way Grayson Allen had a tripping problem. Yeah. Like Suarez had a biting problem. Yeah, right? so but no, D- D- <laughs> it's on YouTube. Yeah, I found the footage. Yeah. I found the footage. You can't really tell. They don't have a great camera angle. They obviously. slowed it down on this video. Yeah, it's still tough to like see the bite. Yeah, see yeah. the engraving of the bite. Dude, he bit a guy. Well, I think it's like <laughs> it, it, uh, on some level, it's like your childhood baby instincts kicking in. That's the way Mike Tyson explained the whole oh, Holyfield yeah. thing. You gotta be crazy. Yeah, you gotta. That be, is right. not an instinct. Like you, you see him out there. He who's with a black T-shirt and like, like what are we doing? Well, the way Mike Tyson explained it, like why'd you buy the Vanderbilt? He said he's headbutt me over and over again, and the ref won't do anything about it. And so, and, and so this is and so I'm like, fine, I'm gonna bite you. Like it's like he it, also said he would eat his children. He's a wild dude, Mike yeah, Tyson. Yeah, I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah, there you go. Here's a bite. All right, watch it. Look. Oh, look at it. Bit that leg. <laughs> that's a wild. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's a good yeah. place to bite, though, right like a, there. Like a, like, you treat him like a two-piece from KFC. Look, and I, I'm sure Dinky has tried to get past this. You got but, some meat but, on that bone hey, right there in that calf. Look, yeah. If hey. I was going to bite somebody, I might bite the calf. It's a yeah. whole, hey, look, it's a hilarious story. It is. Hey, by the way, he's... Some, and he is, he is not... Look, someone what should, a redemption story. Yeah. Once got thrown out of a game for biting someone, uh-huh. and then, as of last night, here you go. I've got some trivia for you. Oh, no. Dijon Giroux has joined Damon Stoudemire as the only two players in Grizzlies history to record five rebounds and five assists in their first two games. He is also the first NBA player since data was tracked in 1983 to total 10-plus rebounds, 10-plus assists, and 5-plus steals off the bench in his first two appearances on an NBA court. Look at that. Okay. That's a redemption story. That's a real redemption story. He's going to get one of them GG Vince contracts. You never yeah, know. He mess around, he, get signed for the year then. Dude, he does the Vince stuff. He does. He is very Vince light. Yes. Isn't he? I loved him. He's yeah. like the hustle. Yeah. He's very much. Uh, He's Vince light. Yeah, a little bit of that. And then there's also kind of how he attacks. He was like G League Westbrook, where it's like just yeah. relentless. Like, like G League, it's great like, value. Yeah, he's just gonna go SGA. to the basket at any point. It's the, like what the hell. The guy, like it's it's one of those things where the, in, in the Vince way is he's just in the mix AAC somehow. Player of the year, so he's just like, in yeah. the mix somehow. And he has good energy too. He's, he's always good. doing something. He's got he good is energy not too. Afraid either. You don't say. Not afraid. Well, I can't bite your ass. Well, I <laughs> well, think you say Vince is a byproduct of like. Kelvin Sampson recruits guys like that. Buddy. And then you spend time with Kelvin Sampson, you become one of them dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Like War that, like, time. Yeah. Yeah. Except, Those, except you think Kelvin Sampson ever called him Deaky? No. Probably. By the way, Roser. I think Kelvin Sampson is probably cooler than we think he is. Way cooler. Because he, he's old now. He was not cool when he was young. He's the one that yelled at me. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? He pumped me out so bad. I almost quit media because of Kelvin Sampson. And uh, you remember years yeah, later, yeah, yeah. I had him on the show and I told him. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I went down to Ole Miss and he had a kid named Hollis Price. Oh, yeah. Who was at uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma played Ole Miss. And Ole Miss was up big. And then uh, this is when Rod Barnes was still at Ole Miss. It's probably 25 years ago now. And Ole Miss just like went on this crazy run at the end. Crowd, you know, this is in the tad pad piece of crap, and everybody's going nuts, so and whatever. And so, my job was to go and like get audio for our updates the next day on our sports updates. And so, I like, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, all right, I've got my question, <laughs> right? I'm 21 years old or right. something, and I was like, uh, coach, do you, uh, do you feel like the, the crowd tonight here, uh, affected your young team? That's a pretty good question, right? It's at least good enough That's to That's not an you, unreasonable question. No, it's fine. Right? Bro, and, and now we're standing outside, right? And I've just got a recorder like this. So I am literally a foot from the guy. Calvin Samson looks right at me, and he goes, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I was like, oh, this is funny. shit. This is- I just want to die. <laughs> okay. I'm like, yeah? And he's like, okay, then. And I was like, damn it. Okay, so this yeah, is funny. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I, would, I think when he just, I like got the car, I'm crying. I'm like, I hate I think it. when he just is mad, he just snaps like that. Yeah. Because I, I've <laughs> known Kelvin since I've got to CBS, which is like 2006. It's, I've known him for a long time now, nearly 20 years. Like, friendly with him. Yeah. One day I'm on the sideline, Memphis-Houston game at FedEx Forum, CBS Sports Network. And, like, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I say, like, I have a good relationship with this guy. We know each other. Yeah. So it's halftime. Talk to the winning, co- you know, two questions for the whoever's ahead. Houston was ahead. So it's like producer in your ear, like, all right, get Kelvin two questions. We're getting, then we're getting to halftime. Got it. I go get Ke- Something happened right before half. Uh-oh. That was like a controversial call. So rather than Kelvin come straight to me at halftime, like he's supposed to, his SID is going to bring him to me, he's going after the official. And so producer's like, tell us when you got him. Because all this stuff is like by the second. Yep. TV. It's like, everything's by the second. They're like, tell us when you got him. I'm like, he's arguing with the ref. I can't interrupt. You know, I'll have him. You just, you know, keep talking. Have them keep. Anyway, he gets to me. And it's like, okay, now we're down to one question. Just one question. Because we're running out of time. And I said, uh, Kelvin, couldn't help but notice you had an issue with something that happened at the end of the half. You were talking to the official. What happened? He said, won't you just ask him? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <Yo. laughs> I said, so when he just I, gets I, I over said, I, I said, okay, thanks, coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, coach. Hey, guys, I'm going to go interview the ref. The studio, like, <laughs> obviously, Kelvin Sampson not happy. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, I, but I, like, I know that's not, I know he's Jesus. not mad at me. And I know that he, like, we're actually friends. But he was, like, he, like, actually... If he didn't yell, he raised his voice. It was yeah. awkward. Yeah. And I was like, uh, okay, coach. All right. he's, he's, right, he, he, he gets intimidated, <laughs> too. He, yeah. Because yeah. he looks mad. Yeah. You know what I mean? He does like he's, he's one of those guys that, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. Hulk up. Yeah. 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 He's intimidated, man. Shot I was, I, dude, he man. ruined my life. He's great. Like, that I, night, he ruined my well, life. My early I was like, oh, my God. Well, uh, like, early, I think even when I was in college, like, one of the big games, Marcus Moody scored, like, 40 against Kelvin Sampson in Oklahoma. Wow. And I just remember that shaping my early opinion of Kelvin Sampson. I was like, how can Marcus Moody score 40? <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, and I love Marcus Moody, but that still seemed crazy. <laughs> and uh, obviously, Kelvin has gone on to be one of the – he's one of the greats. Hey, he's oh, a, he, he's one of the built greats. A, he has built a monster there. Dude, he went yeah. from the AAC to the Big 12 and won it by multiple games. Crazy. He's one you'd like to see them win it all, just so he gets one. Yeah. If, I, if so I could pick one. it this year, I would want Kelvin or Matt Painter. I would want Purdue yeah. or Houston to win the national. Well, we know you want Purdue. Oh, yeah, God. we you know. Stay glazing, Purdue. Yeah, <laughs> Paris the Boilermaker I'm over here. I, I, I'm a Ride the train. I'm a Boilermaker at this point. Yeah, oh, we know. Really I'm, half, I'm half Boilermaker. If, if you saw Scottie Pippen walking around Gotta look like the one. city right now, would uh-huh. you, look, you look like a Boilermaker. I would not be excited by the presence of Scottie ass. Pippen. You would? No. Why would I? Yeah, why would you be? I, I would, he looks like a boiler maker. You do, low key. I do you look are. a little like, you like the mascot, low you key. Are. A, in fact, I hope somebody photoshops that shit. <laughs> put, so I can say put, the, on my phone. put the little tin hat I on his so, head. I have so many Gary photoshops from people that hate him on my phone. My kids have Gary photoshops <laughs> on their phones. Hey, somebody right? do that. Put the boiler maker little boiler. hat on Gary. <laughs> the, 
My kids got my <laughs> Gary Boilermaker. I need that. My kids have photoshops of me of people putting penises on my head. <laughs> That's because I send them to them. <laughs> why the, why they like, put <laughs> Why they put wieners on your head? <laughs> Vernon and Oliver texting <laughs> photoshops of Yo, me. Yo, look night. at this. I got one of that dude from the office where they gave you hair on the side of your head. Was oh, that the Kevin? No, whatever his name is. Damn, Gary. What you oh, be doing hey, to people, look, man? If he ranks your team. Team wrong, they oh, will bust right. his ass. They'll oh, look at that. Look at Gary. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look alike, Cam. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm a boulder maker for real. I'm becoming boulder maker. <laughs> I'm transitioning to boulder maker. <laughs> Let's say he's transitioning. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm going to start competing as a bowler maker. I love it. I love it. Oh, my God. All right. Gary, have fun in New York, yeah, brother. All right. Bye, all right. Bye. We're going to take a quick break. Jessica Benson is going to join us in the studio Ooh. on the other side. Chris Varney, show. Anticipate each challenge. Make a quick response. Capitalize on every opportunity. And win. Greatness won't wait. It's true in basketball. It's true in banking. Grizzlies checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Open a Grizzlies checking account with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by April 30th. And you could receive a $200 direct deposit bonus into your account. Details at grizzliesbanking.com. Member FDIC. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. Today, we have two very special guests on our program. Introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip? Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Valley Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Valley Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Valley Sports and streaming on the Valley Sports app. Valley Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com.
Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. Look, uh, ball so hard, they don't know what to rate me. Yeah. Uh, Pedal to the metal, I'm gone, don't chase me. Yeah. Uh, all up in my zone, can't no one face me. Yeah. All eyes on me, got the whole world away. Say I'm in my bag, that's an understate. My wings got a mask, so they gonna hate. The pack got me going like a runaway. On beats, I go down like I'm from the bay. Let me demonstrate. Watch me float to the bank, I levitate. I'm in my zone, NCAA. Straight to the top, high elevate, scoring on every play. Yeah. Uh, top notch play, I ain't never been better. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who got it, now I gotta bend better. Yeah. I knew I was the man before anyone told me. Yeah. And the job ain't done till I hold that trophy. Look, uh, ball so hard, they don't know what to rate me. Yeah. Uh, pedal to the metal, I'm gone, don't chase me. Yeah. All right, we're back. Chris Vernon. Show! Go get that Caesar Sportsbook app. You can go to your app store. You can type in Caesar Sportsbook and you can download it. For free, you can use it legally in the state of Tennessee. And new users get up to $1,000 back as a bonus bet if you lose your first wager. If you use the code GCM1000, GCM1000. Grizzlies were an underdog last night. Disgraceful. Outright dub. Yeah, to the we're, Washington Wizards. What about tonight against the uh, we're former Bobcats? Again. We're barking again. Uh-oh. One and a half. They didn't wow. watch last night? I, I'm going to lose that. That team last night was the most disgusting display of basketball I have seen yes. in years. And they all hate Jordan Poole. A I'm not kidding. As a staff, as a label, as a crew, they all a hate Jordan Poole. A disgrace to the sport. No, truly a disgrace. Yes. Watching them, that is like, they didn't even run any. They, they shouldn't just, be allowed they, to play the rest of the year. They don't even like run plays. No. They shouldn't be just allowed to play. Just a bunch of running yeah, yeah, around. Like, who was number 97, bro? I, I think if you ask the Wizards knows? players, if hey, if you if we told you the season that you have to forfeit the rest of your games, but the season's over, they you guys don't, they would 100% yeah, they would. agree to it. 100%. I don't have agree to hang out it. with Jordan Poole anymore. Yeah, they would 100% <laughs> agree to it. At least, at least we get right. to see Brandon Miller tonight. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Hoops for St. Jude is going on grizzlies.com slash St. Jude. You can uh, donate and you can win prizes uh, every single hour, including this hour. And uh, you can also donate to Team Zebo or Team TA tonight for <coughs> the special celebrity game at halftime. And last night on the pregame show, we had uh, uh, Rick Sadiak on, who is the... CEO of St. Jude, who's always good. And he was talking about all the developments they have. They have a whole new housing development with 114 new rooms uh, that is going on uh, under construction over at St. Jude. And as you know, no family ever pays for anything at St. Jude. Travel, lodging, medical care, you name it. They don't pay a dime because they've got enough to worry about. And so your donations are what enables that to happen. And it's truly a place that's heaven on earth. Last year, I told you, I, I got to do the, during the golf tournament, I was around a couple of the kids, uh, you know, that were unbelievable St. Jude success stories. One of, the, one of the kids had had, I want to say it was like six brain surgeries. Um, and I mean, he's 14, 15 years old. And he had already had those and it like made this full recovery and everything. And he was out, he was out with us and we were doing the event with him. And I'll never forget, we were walking around and he says to me, he's like, man, you have no idea how lucky you are. And you know what? It's one of those moments where I got like so warm inside. I was like, damn, man. And I was like, man, I know, I know. And he was like, man, where I'm from, it's like seven dollars a gallon. <laughs> I was like, "What?" He was talking about the gas prices. I thought he was talking about. It. I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm really, I'm really lucky." And he's like, "I'm from California. It's like seven dollars a gallon." He's like, "I was driving around. He's like, it's like three dollars and thirty cents here." And I was like. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, 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 I, guess yeah, I, yeah I guess I guess yeah, I am yeah, lucky, yeah, you're right? You're right. Um, <laughs> but man, just like being around those kids and seeing, you know, they were truly giving their lives back 
by this place. And so um, I'm hopeful that a lot of our audience donates. And uh, there's obviously going to be a big to-do with the game going on tonight. Jessica Benson is on the Jessica Benson Show every morning at 8 o'clock on Grind City Media, on the app, on YouTube, everywhere you can find your podcast. Joins us weekly to get us caught to date on everything we need to know that's going on in the world of pop culture and entertainment. Let me hear it. It is a beautiful day. And it really is gorgeous. It's it 75 is. degrees outside. It the is. sun is shining. And what better weather to talk about? Kate Middleton conspiracy theory. <laughs> 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 oh, I've heard oh about Photoshop Vogue cover that, yeah, or something. Is, I did is, see okay. that oh, in passing. No. But I don't know yeah. what. I All I saw oh. was they Photoshopped a Vogue cover. They did not. Okay. Oh, this, is, this is basically, this is supposed to be Jessica's uh, five pop culture headlines. It's basically just Jessica talks about Kate Middleton Where is now. Kate Middleton? Yeah, where is she? That's what we're doing three. now. Still, still unknown. Okay, still we don't know. Still unknown. This has become an international mystery. Everybody is involved. You mentioned the Vogue photo shoot. So we'll start there. So okay. on Sunday, a picture was posted by the official Kate Middleton account. And the Brits have called me out for calling her Princess Kate. It is the Brits? Catherine, Princess of Wales, so I will get the terminology correct, uh, so they cannot oh, come the for Brits me. are coming for your neck. Some people get really yeah, pissed off. Yeah, okay. The technicality Everybody the gets really pissed off you about can, everything. You can't piss the British off. You cannot. They'll just... That's right. Pip, pip. Anyway. <laughs> pip, pip. Uh, pip, so from her Twitter account, it was Mother's Day in the UK, and they yeah. released this photo. And the second I saw this picture of her and her three children, you always look at the hands. I don't know. All of a sudden, we're like very conditioned to look at hands to see if something is photoshopped. Because oh. hands are really difficult in the AI space and in the Photoshop world. And forget about the little boy, because I think he actually is just doing something weird with his fingers. Immediately, <laughs> I looked at Kate's like left hand was blurry. That's just the start of it. On the right side, the little girl, <coughs> her wrist is like dissolving into that sweater. If you look down at the left step, that is not a normal step. Uh, there's just Photoshop mishaps all around. Like double digit Photoshop mishaps have been pointed out in this photo. So, so the royal so family put this, put this out? picture okay. out. To Some say, oh, look, here's Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Everything's yeah. fine. Everything's good. Everything's okay. copacetic with the royal family. Don't oh. worry about Kate. Here she is. And people were like, no. And then they went back and even looking at the clothes and the foliage, they've just decided that it's a picture that was taken at another time. And I think maybe when you think about how hard it is for three kids to pose in one picture, it was probably a photo shoot and they pieced it all together, but it's not from right now mm. is the point. And some people thought that they took her face from this Vogue cover shoot from a couple years ago and put that face on, but I went down a deep rabbit hole, which has been the case of every day of my existence suddenly on a story that I didn't care about until three weeks ago. And this guy who like specializes in the pixelization and exactly deciding if something came from another picture, he said it's not. And people I trust trust him. So we're going to go hmm. with it's not the Vogue picture. Hmm. But the photo is absolutely Photoshopped, so much so that the Associated Press and like six other major photo agencies ordered a kill order on the picture. So they said, no, we're not publishing this anywhere because this is fake. Enough of this is fake. So people say that it wasn't even taken. Yeah. yeah. So I... This is pretty clear. Yeah. They got her. Like, the, the, the royal family, like, they got her. And I think this is showing that Meghan Markle's actually way smarter and deserves an apology from everybody. She got out of this oh, crap. the smartest people she here got are Harry and Meghan for leaving. She got out of this okay, stuff. Okay, so hold on now. They got her. Yes. Hold you on. said hold on. Next they question. got her. What well, got her how? They got her. What, what, does, that what does that mean? What does that she mean? She probably... Short shirt roses? You think she's dead? I, no, but I think she was questioning stuff. Questioning stuff we within the family. We will get some of the new And they theories. got her. And they took her away. And she's being trained to behave like a proper member of the royal family. Trained? Yes. Yeah, like she's Megan in a dungeon Moore somewhere? Of this guy. And they got Everybody's out of this. now in on it. Oh and they got out of it. Theory. Megan and Harry got out of this crap. And they got out of it. So she's in a so she's in a dungeon somewhere. We don't somewhere? want anything to do with this. So she, yeah, she, she's like being quotes. hidden. She's being hidden somewhere, being trained. Yeah. There are many. <laughs> Let me get to the. She my so there's that picture, You're right? Be like I'm crazy. There's I'm that dead picture. Right, it's like when you watch those things about like Scientology. Uh -huh. and they they got yeah, right? No, really, they they, they do is, that too. I know they do to Scientology. Was Kate Middleton ever real at all? Do it to protect their family. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if social media had existed during Princess Diana and Charles? Oh my god. Like it would have been insane. And 
Our government kills Diana its own to citizens people. to protect secrets. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Like, come on. He puts I on a short like, sleeve shirt and just gets wild. Are you yeah. also going to be on the RFK Aaron Rodgers ticket? <laughs> yeah. I told you. I'm a little uncomfortable with the short sleeves. I'm just going to start saying <laughs> it. I'm just going to start saying it. Go ahead, Roser. Okay, so the picture is, is super weird, right? Yeah. And they had her <laughs> tweet, like, all of us, have, as an amateur photographer, I've experimented with editing. I'm sorry for this. It's just a weird situation all around. So then another photo comes out on Monday, a paparazzi <laughs> shot that they claim was William and Kate in a car together. <laughs> Nobody can tell it's her. <laughs> this, yes. Here, here's the great picture of Kate Middleton. <laughs> Kate's head turned a different way. Now, people have focused on the fact that like the brick is different from the top of the building. I found another TikTok sleuth, which is why we should not get rid of TikTok, yeah. because there are some very important lessons to be learned. And she actually found where this pic was allegedly taken. And it would make sense that the brick looks different, because the other part is like not, it's a different kind of okay, material. Okay, well, yeah, let's get to Anyways, what, what theory again. do you believe? So now... Prince About William is having an affair, allegedly. So much so that this made the late night rounds last night. Uh, like Colbert's opening monologue included this notion of a woman named Lady Rose Hanbury, the Marchioness of Chumley. The Independent did a weird profile on her, like a positive profile, like who is Lady Rose? And the assumption is, are they trying to roll out like this introduction of this uh, woman? She is married to someone 24 years her senior and friends of the family, like Kate knows her, but it has long been rumored. Like the people who follow the Royals regularly, not the rest of us who are just Think along for this quick ride. They got something going. They have been in on Lady Rose and William for a long time. Lady Rose. Lady Rose. So wow. some people have Sounds like a wondered, stripper. you know, is there a divorce yeah. going on? Is it something that like Kate is not, not being like held away, but trying to get her to the point where she's accepting of this are they just waiting for time is she so upset that she so now it's dudes having an affair it. and that's why they're yeah. keeping her away from everything but, and like because it could bring the whole the whole thing, thing down he's doing it again that's right like father like son here we go again and then there are some because they've had enough going on with the epstein island guy right Andrew. yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a lot so who problematic does, who's done photoshop better kate middleton or the girl that painted desmond bain's face yesterday oh my god that wasn't photoshop <laughs> that wasn't photoshop <laughs> that was just no you see she posted art. she photoshopped it wait what she posted it no and made way. it look different yeah no way go to her twitter Dude, no. Yeah, my mom Twitter. texted me when she said it she was the worst painting so I've ever seen in my life. Hey, hold up. I bet Pugs has it. Oh, he it's does. in his office. Yeah. Oh, I'll get it. I've, I've, I'm going to put it in studio. I was in there yesterday. He's, he's not going to let you do that. Why not? No he's not gonna, he's he wouldn't not let, let you put up the Chandler Parsons thing in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tried to. Hey, you know they have those Grizz Garage sales? Yeah. They had a. They had. They had. They had the biggest picture in the world. Of Chandler Parsons holding up a jersey next to Chris Wallace, and I tried to buy it, <laughs> and I said I wanted to get hanging in studio, and Puck said, no. "The hell you are!" Hey, hey, look up Jessica Haas on Twitter. Okay, hold on. Jessica Haas. Yeah. H a s s. Yeah. Go look at her Twitter. She account. photoshopped the Desmond Bain picture that she drew in front of everyone. Yes. That's madness. Wait, no. Where is it? Did she delete it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, she she got... No, look. Go to her replies. Oh, replies. Click oh, replies. no. You see oh, it? Oh, no. Yeah! <laughs> she photoshopped the I one mean, that we all look, saw it her... It still doesn't look like do, it. Do, but it's still... That's crazy. All right. Yeah. So okay. What story? Anywho, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the big one. We yep. will continue to keep everybody updated. Again, she's supposed to be back on Easter. Is she just going to show up? Right. We'll find out. I cannot wait. Okay, the Oscars were this week. Yep. I know you watched. I heard. I was happy to hear that you watched because I love award shows. I know you haters on the other side are anti-award shows. I'm such a weirdo. I got like a nice dinner, a nice bottle of wine. I was watching the red carpet. I was watching pregnant Vanessa Hudgens and Julian Huff in giant pants, and I was all the way in. Viewership raised like 4%. Mm. So 19.5 million people watched the Oscars. It's not... Yeah, not huge. It's okay. Considering it was a huge Ex movies huge in movies. the news year. Yes, and I think it's proof that the movies are not the problem. Like, yeah. it was a great year getting people right. back to the movies and some very beloved movies and just overall a very healthy year for cinema. So, like, how do you fix the award show? I don't know. No I entirely. think... It's my okay, opinion. Give me your opinion. I think people feel radically different about Hollywood than they used to. Sure. I think there's less you know what I mean? there's almost more of a the self-righteousness and all the it. extra. I think it's different. I think they're they're too accessible now. I think in the past 
some of the rare times that you saw celebrities were in magazines and then on the red carpet and at award shows. Like, oh, that's true. But now only it's time. only the old people. And now, yeah. Like and now Al Pacino, seen, I had not seen. I mean, exactly. And then that was Robert De Niro. Right. Yeah. I think there like is something. To, I think there is something to. What There's you a resent. There's some people. But some people it don't is like. Why, it is why. Dude, the wine stuff. There are people who refuse to go see movies But I'm saying all that Harvey Weinstein stuff, all that Epstein stuff. I mean, you think about a lot of the huge scandals that we've had. The whole Me Too movement, dude. And There's a lot wild. of people that think I it's think a, a lot cesspool. Of people turn the you got the whole ca- child trafficking crap that's always out there. And it's it, just like, no, and I think there's people don't it's, like Hollywood it's, like it's they also used to. Because in, in, uh, in one of those Hollywood. awards, what, what was the award show where Ricky it, it, Ricky Gervais's opening monologue? It is seriously the most famous, and it still goes mm-hmm. around viral everywhere. When he says, or the Globes, the, the any of the Golden Globes, when he says, "All of you up here, when you get your award." Just get your award, <laughs> say your thank yous to people, and move on. Do not preach to the regular people out there yeah. about what they need to think yeah. and what they need to believe. Because none of you are normal. You all come here in limousines. <laughs> you get $100,000 worth of gifts from designers. Like, just take your award and move right. on. And, 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 I stand with you, Roger. I stand with you, Roger. And, and I'm not saying that that is all of it. I do think the other thing is this. When I, and I've talked about this a lot. When I was a little kid, if you saw a guy driving a nice car down the street, I've heard Adam Carolla talk about this before. It was like, oh my God, I want to. I remember when yes. Mr. Magruder across the street from me got a Porsche. Yes. And I was like, what does he do? Right? Well, my dad had a, a Cutlass Sierra. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what does he do? Like, I wanted to be, like, I, I hope one day. I, and that's the story of a kid, right? Growing right. up, and you see it, whatever. And now. Instead of I want to be like that guy, there's a whole generation now that goes, F that guy. He doesn't deserve that. How did he get that? Sure. They throw friggin' rocks at his porch. You know what I mean? Like, like it, there's a eat. resent of success it that, goes to the Kate Middleton th- that did not why exist. Why are people reacting? The That's jokes right. that have been popping off, like, you know, I, I hope she's okay. That's I hope right. she's recovering from surgery and this is all totally explainable. But there are people making jokes like, Kate Middleton's dead, ha ha. Right. And like, there's such a disassociation because there's an anger towards, I mean, this is what happened. There's a resent. Let's go back to the French Revolution. Like, That's we're right. just now in 2024 and it's everywhere. Um, no, I agree with that. I do think they could bring more people in. Bennett Doyle and I were talking about this at the game last night. I don't understand why the Oscars don't use commercials in a sim- similar way to the Super Bowl in that they should be showing all the movie trailers for the coming year. They should be oh. giving you some semblance of this is the next year in movie. Here we are celebrating this year in movies. Let's turn our attention to the biggest projects next year. You look forward to it. I'm glad it, you brought this up because this was one of my uh, things that I did not mention when we were talking on Monday, but did bother me greatly. Um, and I forgot to mention it. So I don't mind the weirdness of the five past winners coming and mm-hmm. announcing and giving some phony heartfelt like Bradley Cooper you are truly a renaissance man Wait, I'm like really you got a, a renaissance man I like he doesn't like the standpoint of like passing the baton like, I it's got old it Hollywood to new Hollywood but like he's not a renaissance no. man like he doesn't like you know do paintings and run 5k's and do movies like he just, you're a weird he, dude who pretends just, to be other people for a living he did three yeah. different jobs for one movie that's not a renaissance but yeah, whatever right. It's of this pretentious, like, whatever. Here was my problem. One of my favorite parts yeah. about these shows clips. is showing clips. me Team the clips. clip of you Team being clips. an amazing actor, yeah. right? I that moment clips. in the movie that shows me, holy mackerel, I got to watch that, right? right? They didn't show any clips of any of the best actors, yes. actresses. And it was terrible. That's terrible. I love clips. I Me don't too. like that oftentimes clips sit in a place of like, it's always the super hyper emotional moment that doesn't even represent what the per- like why that person's winning the award. It's not because they cried in one scene. It's because of the totality of it. Sometimes it's because they cried in one scene. Yeah, but sure. like, whatever it may be. But I think there can be a balance. Like, I don't mind seeing old celebrities. And like no. you said, those are the ones that we're not seeing cool. as often. Like, Mahershala Ali popped up. And I was like, ah! I love right. him. Um, Jessica Lang popped up. Right. Obs- she's 84 years old. Like, shout, like, out oh shout out Jessica Lang. Shout out Jessica Lang. Shout out Jessica Lang. Anyway, I <laughs> enjoyed the Oscars. I hope that they figure out how to bring people back into the mix because people are watching the movies. People are. Yeah, I like, want the clips. That's the bottom line. Is people are still going and like, right. appreciating this art, and the people who are making those art are the ones being celebrated at these award shows. So figuring yeah. out a way the, to them make and it the all. The got to figure out how to connect it, with the common no, folks. It is bro, wild because uh, because the Oscar because movies there's nothing bigger than Hollywood in movies. Right. Except their biggest show is the Oscars, 
The NFL's biggest show is the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl is watched by like 10 times more people yes. than the Oscars are. Yeah, but you're also overrating the how big the movies are right now. They're just yeah. not. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they're more spread out. No matter how many people saw Barbie, they, it, the Night Agent was seen more times on Netflix. Yeah. That's like, true. If it's on Netflix. <laughs> the Night Agent. Right. Not the Night Agent. There's a convenience. Football, right. for now, is still, and I say for now, because like who, we might be having a pay-per-view Super Bowl right. someday. But for now, it's on cable. That's Everybody right. can watch it. You have to pay to go to a movie. So there is like an inaccessibility part there. All right, number three. Yep. If you are not into Kate Middleton, because I know there's some people out there who are like, well, I family, I don't care. May I interest you in the Cyrus family drama? Because I was My so... Miley and Yes. I was so removed from oh, this. Shit. And I first kind of got turned on to it. I first registered that something was going on at the Grammys when Miley Cyrus accepted her award and she thanked all her friends and family, named a lot of people, like specifically by name, did not mention Billy Ray Cyrus, her dad, oh. and very pointedly said, mm, I think that's everyone. And then walked off. And so I was like, hmm, that doesn't feel right. So then I learned that there's been all this tension between, reported tension between Miley, not reported, like very out there. They're not on speaking terms right now. Her parents oh, got divorced. Oh, what a shame. Her parents got divorced a couple years ago. Okay. And it was a very tough divorce on the family. So like, whatever, that, that kind of stuff happens. That's tough. I wish them well. Dolly Parton is apparently coming out to try to mend the relationship because she's oh, close to both of them. She feels, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we go to the mom, Tish Cyrus. She recently got married to a man named Dominic Purcell. He is an actor from Prison Break. Okay. Fine, whatever. Mm. Miley was there. Notably not there, Miley's sister, Noah Cyrus, Tish's other daughter. Okay. We are now finding out reports. The reason she was not there is because the sister, Noah Cyrus, was originally in a relationship with Dominic Purcell. The man who is now married to her mother. The 50-year-old man who is now married to her mother. And they reportedly, allegedly, hired security for the wedding to make sure that Noah Cyrus did not crash that wedding. And Miley and her mom are really, really close. Like, her mom was just on the Call Her Daddy podcast and had this whole weird story about so how I, she and I, I think I have to be on Team Billy Ray Noah, right? From what you're describing. I guess. Miley, and I don't even know if Noah Miley and Billy Miley probably are on the same resented side. her father's, uh, you know, renaissance fame after Old Town Road. He had been nothing for 30 years and, and then, then he, became, he came back yeah, and thanks to Lil Nas X biggest hit of the year oh. and he's a part of it right <laughs> and he's remarried yeah. too and so like she doesn't support his new marriage I don't know I hate anyway. to hear that it's going poorly yeah it's so sad I mean, for the Cyrus family drama yeah, that's, but a mom dude a marrying mom marrying someone and like the mom that's obviously just denies creepy. and that's says that never happened that means that she was but, peeping the whole time I mean time. they're all from Kentucky <laughs> They all hurt. They, look, they have no issues. No, what's, she's what's Kentucky, this? right? Uh, I'm pretty sure Cyrus is. I know Billy Ray was from Franklin, Kentucky. Mom is from Nashville. Yeah. Where's the mo- or dad? And it, Billy Ray is from Flatwoods, Ken- Kentucky. There you go. Yeah, that's right. And Miley's from uh, Franklin, Tennessee. And he's now with a woman named Fire Rose. Sounds awesome. about right. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds, Sounds about right. just about right. Sounds right. Billy Ray. All right. Story number, Story number four. Yep. Uh, details of Matthew Perry's will came out. Oh. And I usually don't really care yeah. about things with wills. They're dead. Are you going to tell me he gave go money to the friends people? No, better than that. Okay. Okay. His will um, was created in 20, 2009, and he had his money going into a living trust. And the living trust is weirdly named after a character in the movie Annie Hall, which was directed by Woody Allen. Woody Allen. Anyway, just a weird anecdote. But within it, he said, quote, <laughs> I have intentionally omitted from this will and the trust any provision for any of my heirs, issue, relatives, or other persons who are not named. I also intentionally do not provide for any stepchildren or foster children that I now or may later acquire. So in 2009, he essentially wrote out any future children that he potentially would bear in his will. So if he has any little uh, illegitimate kids running around out there, they can't, claim, they can't claim any of his money. That's crazy. He literally said, F them kids. Was it ruled a suicide? No, I think it was ruled an accident. Accidental overdose. Yeah. Right? An accident. And, okay. oh, shoot, I forget the, de- it was something. They said he accidentally overdosed. Yes, and it was. Like the details of it, when I read it, I went into the article yeah. thinking, okay. And then I went out of it saying, oh, that's really sad. I think it probably You think he was actually did? He didn't mean kind of to thing. die. Yeah. Okay. Um, but anyway, no children will be getting anything on his <laughs> in behalf. Case Just like in case he has like a one night stand somewhere. Yes. And the kid shows up and, like, hey, hey he's my dad. Give me my 10 million. Yeah. Exactly. Effects of ketamine. 
Yeah, that's it. So oh, it was ketamine. ketamine, and people are that's using the ketamine. <laughs> the name of the new Playboy it's Cardi the name song. The name of the new Playboy Cardi song. Oh, is it? It is came it, out today. We, really? we can't understand a single word in the song, but it's called ketamine. Gibberish. I watched a documentary where like a kid was using ketamine to deal with some very like strangely specific pain disorder. Uh, yeah, it's a crazy documentary. Scary. The mom ended up, like, the hospital charged the mom with child neglect, and then the mom ended up killing herself, and the family won all this money because the do- the daughter was rightfully getting ketamine. That's like, crazy. Some, not in normal hospitals in America, but yeah. it's internationally, they use ketamine a lot. So I think Oof. that's what that's why it all yeah, triggered yeah, that yeah. with Matthew Perry. Last but not least, because I know you guys are busy today, just a quick hitter. I was shocked to see Denzel Washington and Moneybag Yo hung out, and no one knows why. People are very curious and because he put the pay, he put, Denzel, the, he yeah, put the watch exactly. on. Exactly. Denzel put the watch on. Having lunch uh, with Denzel yeah, is okay. what Moneybag posted. I'm he said, I let him rock the AP. He yeah, said, It's he, time to feed the streets. I'm going to tell you this. I will find out tonight. Willie, oh, are you going to talk to Moneybag? No, he's going to talk to Zebo. Oh, there you go. Zebo okay. will 100% know. Please find out because Denzel Washington like does not hang out I'm with gonna ask famous him. Say, people. I'm going to say, what, <laughs> like, Zebo and Moneybag are like brothers. Great. And yeah. I'm just like, why was he with Denzel Washington? And he got Great. his nice glasses on, too. You never, yeah. see, you never see Bag with the nice glasses He'll on. He'll know. That means that was an important dinner. Zebo's going to be around tonight. Important yeah. dinner. And like all the big like complex and BET and everyone was like, Every article what ended with doing? a, we reached out to both, but there was no comment. Denzel's in the middle of getting ready to, he's doing Othello on Broadway oh, with Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal, yeah. so that's his next big project. But he's not really a like, chummy with celebs kind of guy. He shows up, comes out I'll stage door. I think that is there to be higher okay, on this list than number five. I'm going to ask him. I think this deserves to be higher on the list than number five. Well, wait, we'll put it, it, it on it, the it list. Will, it will be. I'm going to find I'm gonna find <laughs> out tonight. I'll yeah. ask okay, you about Thank when, you. Because we'll be around him. I'll say... What was Moneybag doing with Denzel? The two biggest questions everyone's asking, where is Kate? I want to see both that too. Back hanging out with I want to see both that too. But yeah, get me both answers. Too. Please. I want to know why Zebo was Zebo to hook. What, what if he knew? I bet it's he, might, he, he might. He, you know, I bet it. Well, I bet Denzel Zebo still got his ear to the streets. He knows now. a lot. He may know where Kate Middleton exactly. is. Exactly. Well, Denzel's son is probably. A we fan will find of out if she bag. shows up at WWE. Yeah. Yeah. Son's a big actor. <laughs> this week, so we'll find oh, out. If she comes Here out with, with the Rock, rock. on SmackDown, you I will lose my. Kate Middleton. Guys. Some people think she's on The Masked Singer. I think that's a very sweet, <laughs> a very sweet that's organic a, option for where Kate Middleton is. That's a good hy- hypothetical. The she's a masked singer. All right, Thanks, we got to take a quick break. Carmion Hamilton from HGTV is going to join us in studio. She's taking part in the celebrity halftime basketball game tonight for Hoops for St. Jude. We'll be back into this Chris Vernon show. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Do you think Travis Kelsey ever sits there and goes, this is wild. Can you imagine from just being, you imagine from going from just somebody who listens to Taylor Swift's music, like, like the rest of us. Yeah. To like, she comes over to your house and like watches TV with you. Isn't that crazy? It's pretty cool. Wouldn't that be crazy? I'd love that. What do you think they watch? Oh, the crown. The Gary Parish Show, live weekdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Bally Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Bally Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Bally Sports and streaming on the Bally Sports app. Bally Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. Vince Williams is going to go to All-Star Weekend. Now, what a great thing for him. Kudos to, to Vince Williams Jr. You know, um, he was an injury replacement on the Panini Rising Stars. He'll get a chance to be part of the All-Star 
weekend showcase. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. We're back, Chris Vernon. Show! So, these last two days we've been doing Hoops for St. Jude. Been a part of that. Listeners can view a list of items and incentives as we're trying to encourage you to donate over the course of the next two days. Uh, all right, grizzlies.com slash St. Jude, grizzlies.com slash St. Jude. And tonight, there is a celebrity basketball game at halftime of the Hornets game. You can donate to Team Zebo or Team TA and be entered to win a special edition gold Grizzlies basketball autograph by all the participating celebrities. There's a silent auction and a mystery grab bags link at uh, grizzlies.com slash St. Jude. Team Zach is going to include Ashley Shields. Anthony Miller, famous Amos, Kia Shine, and Justin Moore. Team Tony is going to have NLE Choppa, Drummer Boy, Zach Duncan, Zach Myers, and from HGTV, Carmion Hamilton. She joins us in studio. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, so now I want to hear the whole story of your life. Okay, which story? Grew up in Memphis. Technically, I grew up in West Memphis, Arkansas. West Memphis, Arkansas, you go to school where? Shout out Southland. Come on, Southland. Yeah, yes, it's so huge then, now. That's what the Memphians know us for yep. now. But I grew up in West Memphis, Arkansas. Went to high school at West Memphis High School. Went to college at the University of Central Arkansas in Conway, Arkansas. I moved to Memphis about 13 years ago. Okay, um, so, so after, after Central Arkansas, right? You get mm -hmm. out of college, and what are you going to do? So I go to school to be a physical therapist, but in the middle of my physical therapy track, I lost my academic scholarship. By the way, I played basketball. I, I hope we'll get to Let's that. Let's go. I have to put, put my street cred out there. Oh, she hoping. I hooped. I <laughs> hooped. I played AAU, middle school, and high school basketball. Was offered basketball scholarships, but went the academic route. So I chose my academic scholarship. Okay. But anyway, short story, lost my academic scholarship, became an RA. Someone told me to check out the interior design department. I changed my major the next day and graduated with an interior design degree. So that's wow. how I became an interior designer. All yes. right, so <laughs> now you're going to move to, uh, not unlike uh, probably my life, which was I got done with college, I moved to the closest big city, right? Because you're, now you got to, now you're out of college, you got to find a job. Indeed. So you moved to Memphis, and what are you going to do right after college? What well, was life like? So after college, I moved to Fort Smith, Arkansas, okay. which is not the biggest, closest city <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, but I was offered a job before I even finished college. I designed healthcare facilities for a healthcare company that was based in Fort Smith. So I did that for five years. Um, but in the middle of that tenure, I got married. My husband at the time worked for Kroger. Kroger moved us to Missouri and then from Missouri to Memphis. So gotcha. Kroger is who moved us to Memphis. He ultimately left Kroger, worked for Nike, and we've just uh, been well, here. So, then, yeah. so then you were in Memphis. Okay. Yeah, in Memphis, yes. Okay, and so are you in Memphis? What are the jobs? You're doing interior design once you move here? Yes, so moved to Memphis and ultimately was laid off from my healthcare job, started my own firm, Newbie Interiors, but also at the same time worked for a couple furniture retailers here. At the time there was an IO Metro. Okay. Um, they are no longer here. Right. Um, and then went on to work for Stash Home, which was like the 
coolest furniture store here. Worked with them for like five years running. Was that the one at Poplar and Per or at uh, Poplar Ridgeway. and Ridgeway? Yes. Yeah, so, I did an event yes. there years ago. It was right by that Jason's Deli. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I remember that. So I was part of their buying team and leadership team. Um, loved working with them, but. In the midst of working with them, my social media presence took off, and I got a lot of opportunities work with, working with brands and clients, so I ultimately left that job. So how does the social media presence take off? So I started a blog right after college, so I've been digitally present for 15 years. Gotcha. So started the blog. Once Instagram was incepted, I was a part of it, sharing my life there. But it wasn't until Instagram stories became a thing. Like, that was probably five years after Instagram started. So people got to see the face behind my designs, and everything changed after that. People didn't care about design. They wanted to know where I got my nails done. And I had purple <laughs> hair at the time. Where's my outfit from? So it was really people getting to know me. Wait, and did, so your, did your presence grow simply off the work? People so had not seen you, yes. and if they clicked on your page, it was really just design. It was mostly design. Wow. Yes. And then stories, I got on to talk about the designs, share my life, and it was insane. Like, it's almost like you were like a... What's a what's an artist? A Sia, right? Where she like she, like you don't know. Who no, she, is. she wore that thing because she just wanted people to like <laughs> like her, her music, music yes. right? So you you started with people started being with a design. fan of what you do, and then yeah. they saw you yeah. and were like, "This is not what I expected." Yeah. Or they were right. they just thought you, I was you had a purple cool. hair and yeah. you had long nails and <laughs> not what they probably envisioned as an interior designer. I had a little bit more to offer than just interiors. Right. Um, so then I talked a lot more. I have very unique life perspectives. I love talking about life. So it just blossomed into a lifestyle channel more than design. And being able to speak to so many things, I guess, got the attention of producers. I was approached by some producers early 2020 saying, hey, we have a project we think you'd be great for. I didn't find out until I was officially cast like six months later that it was for a competition show, and that was HGTV's Design Star, the resurgence of their number one show that ended, I think, in 2013. Um, but I got cast for Design Star next year. And this is, the fir this is the bring back, right? This uh, is the bring back a, a, a of, show of the show. show that everybody loved so yes. much. Yes. Now they're bringing back, so this is the best one to be a part of, right? Exactly. Because for uh, you know for for your own uh for your own career you knew people are going to be watching this because they used to love this show and exactly. now it's like bringing back an old friend exactly. that's already got a built-in fan base exactly right? yeah. exactly so originally was very skeptical because i thought i was just getting my own show i didn't know i was gonna have to compete on a show but it worked out i won the show so. <laughs> <laughs> I won the competition. Was reality TV, as it were, what you expected it to be? You know, a competition in interior design in reality TV, you don't really know what to expect. It's not like you're going to shoot The Bachelor or something like right. that. Although the previous inception of Design Star very much had a lot of the drama. They had to live together. It was very much like Big Brother with design mm -hmm. but it wasn't like that this time it was the production part i guess was if you had to think about it was kind of what you expected but competing in interior design it was absolutely not what i expected it was the hardest thing i've ever had to do i came back with uh like high blood pressure and anxiety and a stent in, stent in the er with colitis like my oh my body God. was stressed to the max like working all day, staying up all night, stressing about getting your project done the next day. It, was, it, it the, was insane. Is it the work or the fact that the work is going to be on TV? It was the work. I know oh, I do good work. work. I know I'm a great designer. You never really think about competing against other designers, but I'm like, I, this has to look good on television. I have to get it done because the time constraints were real. They would go, oh, you have three days when really it was about 20 hours to get these projects done. And it was nerve wracking. Right. So, you know, if you don't get it done, you're going home. So it was about getting it done. So I've always wondered about something like this. How long does that take to shoot? 
Like, uh, if I see a show, it's a whole season of a show that I'm watching, but those have all been recorded, in many uh -huh. cases, a long time ago. Yeah. Our season of Design Star was shot in six weeks. Six weeks? Six weeks. So you're somewhere on site Yes, for we six were weeks. in Southern California, right outside of Torrance, California. It was beautiful, um, but we were there for six weeks, so we kind of were shooting like an episode and a half every week. Okay, and then how long after you shoot it does it appear on television? That one was really special. They ended up tying Design Star into the launch of the Discovery Plus app when Discovery was Discovery. It's not even Discovery anymore. Uh, we finished shooting like Thanksgiving 2020. It was on Discovery Plus February 2021, like literally a m two months later which is unheard of. It usually is about six months after you produce a show. And do you just have to sign an NDA and say, I'm going to remain completely silent? Yes. I can't even tell my family I won this show? Yes, I had to disappear. I had disappeared from the internet. I had to break up with clients I had at the time. For two months? For two months. Oh, like, until February? Literally. Or until the show is while, over? While we were producing the show, I had to disappear. And then when I got back, I couldn't tell anybody where I was gone. Um, my husband knew, my dad knew, and huh? my That's best crazy. Knew. Yeah, you literally have to disappear. So, so what do you do when you disappear like that? I So when I had to break up with my clients, I was like, sorry, I had an emergency come up. But You here, couldn't even tell them you were on the show? I couldn't tell them I was on the show, no. <laughs> but I called show. three friends that are designers that I was like, okay, I, have to, I need to move some client work around. I'm going to be sending people y'all's way. Here's my list of people. Here's my contacts. Like, I gave them my entire business structure. And what are you telling them is the reason? I I have something I have to go do. <laughs> and they're like, so and they're, like, they're like, what do you have like, to go what do? what are you doing? Are, what are, you, are you okay? Theories about what's wrong with you? I'm sure people made up their own stories about where I was and what was happening. I, I'm like, everything's fine, but I just have to go. But what about your family? Well, my husband knew and my dad knew. My extended family... It was just kind of, I'm like, I'm at work. I was just telling them I'm at work. So, <laughs> I'm at work. They were, they were like, man, she are, she probably off doing some crazy shit. <laughs> they, like, they know I had well, clients and, all over the place. And so maybe they just that's what work. Kate Middleton's doing. <laughs> She's <laughs> filming <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. We don't know. Well. She's on Big Brother UK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's on Big Brother UK. <laughs> there you go. Maybe that's why people are saying she's on The Masked Singer. Yeah. 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 She can't oh say it. She can't say it. <laughs> she can't say it. She's actually on The Masked Singer. Yeah. But, yeah, it's but a I didn't secret. know that's the way it worked. And so that's a long time to be off the grid completely mm -hmm. also you never know when you originally when do you sign up for this when do you know that so, you're that's the crazy part so the initial touch point was like february 2020 and march you know the pandemic hit i had just had like my first you know i think it was a skype call at the time and it took several months they had to completely reformat the show because of the pandemic but i found out i was cast in August. But of this is like the blessing of all blessings. Everything. Because like, it's going on through the pandemic, yes. which killed every industry, including yours. Everything right? You're else. not doing interior design when everybody is staying six feet apart and wearing masks. And then actually interior design was one of the one one of the main industries oh, that good. excelled during because the pandemic. People, because everybody was at home and was like, Oh, let me fix my house up. Exactly. I like I don't wow. like what I'm looking at, so I'm gonna call a designer. Well, you know what else went crazy? television shows indeed and so your timing on this was right? everything there's more people that are gonna get are, are, are gonna there everybody's looking for something to something watch, to watch. Exactly. because we're not out exactly right and so that just happens to be the season that you're on this national tv show yes my entire existence just blew you up. You owe it to the, the pandemic. <laughs> Shout out to the pandemic. I am a pandemic success story. Shout out to the pandemic. I hate to say that like it was a very tumultuous time and right. tragic and everything, but my career excelled for sure. Right. And so, okay, you win the show. Mm -hmm. At the end of the show, now you can tell everybody, obviously, and everybody's like, oh, that's where she's been. Yes, I can tell everybody when it airs. And, yes. Okay, and so at the end of the show, what's the reward at the end of that season? So I won $50,000 Okay. and my own show. 
Gotcha. Yes. And now do you do they already have the show or do you get to plan what I want the show to be? I get to be part of the creative planning process. They ask me, what kind of show do you want to do? Blah, blah, blah. And I said, I don't care as long as I get to shoot my show in Memphis. That was the only thing I wanted. I was like, I'll shoot whatever kind of show you want. I can do anything. I can talk about anything, but it's got to be in Memphis. Was there any reluctance to that? Not a single bit. Wow. They said, absolutely. Yep. We shot rental. We got great rental taxes. Here. <laughs> we do. We do. We, we do. have great taxes. We have great taxes. They were probably like, hell yeah, we don't have to be in California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can hide out a little bit. Hey, hey, ain't no more than 50% of a check coming out. There you out. go. Yeah. There right? you go. So they willingly showed up here in Memphis, and we shot my show over six weeks. Tell me about the meetings. Like when you're, because obviously you bring something to the table originally and then everybody's talking it out into what they want the show to be yes so we finally get a a rough format of the show we know we're working with renters because that's something that's not prevalent on the network so let's come with something new new talent new content um my part of the meetings were to make sure my version of Memphis is what was being showcased. I said, I am not an Elvis girl. I've only been to Graceland for work. Respect. And I haven't even been to the house. I've only been to the, like, convention center side. And that little Nike outlet around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the Dodgers. Maybe That's the Dodgers a couple it. times. That Pollard's Barbecue. It. Shout out. I was Shout like, out. But we will not Shout be out. featuring Elvis on this show. We also will not be featuring barbecue on this show. I do not eat barbecue at a barbecue restaurant. Everybody in Memphis... Their family is barbecue, and like we typically don't go spend money right. at a restaurant on barbecue. Also, at the time, I wasn't even eating meat, so I'm like, no, we're not doing barbecue. We're not doing Elvis. So, th- and this is everything that people know about Memphis. Exactly. So, they're probably like, this chick is impossible. Yeah. They <laughs> had to. <laughs> they had to scrap a ton of their notes and a ton of the B roll that they shot around town. I'm like, what no, because it was actually going to be called the Elvis and Barbecue Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they'll be like, hell no. Nah. some barbecue renters with the army on Amazon. Like, nope, not doing All that. Right. No. So you say none of the trite Memphis yes. stuff. Correct. And so that's obviously. Yes, eliminates a ton. But there's so much more here. I wanted to showcase the arts community. A lot of my friends have coffee shops. Like I love 17 Berkshire and Overton Square. Like there are all these little pockets that. I frequent that most of the time you don't know about any of these places outside of Memphis. So I took what I do on social media, my Instagram sharing what I love about the city. And that's what I wanted people to see on my show. Like there are other things to do besides go to Graceland and Elville. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All the, all the regular Memphis yeah, same, things. Same things they do every time we have a game on TV. It's like the home of Elvis and yeah. great barbecue. Like Elvis is <laughs> like, very the like much generic the shots. Yes. Yeah, generic. Like yeah. we have so much more to offer. Let's let's highlight those things. Okay, so that's the first thing that you cared about with the show. What yes. else did you care about with the show? The diversity of the show. Interesting. Very. I'm like, hello, brown girl. I need brown clients. I want to show the diversity of the city. The city is a black city, mm-hmm. so I wanted at least half of my clients on the show. To benefit, one, from showcasing the city, but two, the show really, a secret, hello, paid for those makeovers for those clients. They provided some budget as well, but the production company essentially paid for those those makeovers. So, I'm like, who do we want to benefit from these makeovers? And that's what I, that was what was important to me. Diversifying the show, showing the diversity on the show and diversifying what people saw about Memphis. And it sounds like they were cool about all of it? Every bit of it. Wow. Yeah. So these are not hard meetings. Not at like all. Like you're not sitting there going no. like, guys, I really don't want it to be. Not at all. It was the most amazing process. I had an incredible team, this a great a dream. showrunner. It was literally Like you hear a dream nightmare process. stories about people thinking they're getting yes. into something or, you know, we were just talking yesterday about these people win these music shows. Ah. Uh. And then they just get shelved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I was just going to be competition for whatever your yeah. big artist was. And yeah. now this is not, I thought I was going to be famous and being able to do what I wanted to do. And instead, now I can't even get a record made. Exactly. They become demo singers and right. writers and mm-hmm. lots of back Just get them out the way. People, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate. But yeah. 
thankfully that wasn't my story. Okay, so then you get the show and you're going to start shooting it. Now, you've got some practice, obviously, because you've won mm -hmm. the show, but it's still yes, totally your different. own show. Totally How much different. different are you from episode one to episode six, in your opinion? Is it just, is it night and day, or do you feel like you got the hang of it quickly? I don't think it was night and day. Once I got what I was supposed to do for the show, it was like, talking on Instagram, like, is you want to be the happy-go-lucky person, which is kind of who I am for the most part, really positive, be informational. Also, you're not trying to bore people while they're watching you, so let's, you know, cheese it up a little bit, but it's not inauthentic. It's just let's make this as fun as possible for people that are watching. You gotta turn up. Yeah, you gotta turn up. Gotta it was up. vastly different from the competition show. The competition show was like you couldn't talk to the production crew. They couldn't pick favorite so you literally were sequestered the whole time oh wow like, it was already covid so we're six feet apart all the time but Yo, you can't sounds... really form relationships and then but at I least you're in southern california <laughs> this, this makes me like this in is somebody i'm somebody who wants to go on big brother and you make me not want to go on big oh brother. big brother i can't even imagine i can't imagine i've heard where people on shows like that they get to where they are and they put them in their hotel rooms and yeah. they put tape over the doors so that they can't leave and like be part yeah. of it. They take your cell phones, yeah. all I'll, those kinds of things. I'll like, be in there, like yeah. we at least got to keep our cell phones, but a lot of those places you don't have a cell phone. You have no access to what's happening in the real world yeah, at the I same time. Never, like, never mind. I don't think I would ever do that. So on an episode, I, and it's Reno on rental. It's on HGTV. If I watch an episode, how long does an episode take to shoot? So you're watching a 23 minute episode. It took two weeks to shoot. Oh wow! That show, that episode, two weeks per episode. This is a long time. Yeah. Right. And we shot two episodes at For a time. For 23 minutes. For 23 minutes of content. Yes. That's crazy. It's insane. How much? Jeez. I mean, how much video is that? I mean, it's hours that hours is then condensed to hours. the best 23 minutes. They would take every Saturday and just go around the city with drones and the cameras just to get B-roll and you get probably all of three minutes total of B-roll in a show. <laughs> like, wow. How are you like little clips of street signs yeah, and right. billboard like it's maybe three minutes. And now. how you are and like when some when something like that airs right mm -hmm. are you then just inundated how are you finding the places and the houses and then do you just become swamped with people saying, use mine, use mine, use mine. <laughs> yeah. that, I, I can only imagine, right? Yes. Your whole life is just telling people, I don't choose these exactly. places, right? That yeah. is the key. Yeah, I tell, I promote that we're casting. They, they do a casting call. So people's story has to be just as interesting as their place that we're making over. So there is a casting process, but I have absolutely nothing to do with how people are selected whatsoever so yeah, it's so like a stop hitting her up yeah, yeah. Stop hitting her. you're not getting, you're not yeah. getting her show yeah, all bro. i can do is send you the link to apply that's it like i don't have any i don't even know who's selected oh, you don't even get to choose no you I, don't i don't choose no i don't know who are you saying that so people stop bothering you no no they, you don't see their they, stories they send me a document that's got links in their like sizzle reels like here's all the people that are going to be on the show like that's it i don't have anything to do with the selection process and how many are each seat is six yes we shot six episodes so there were six clients gotcha yeah. and what's next so what's next is what's now. I'm currently going back and forth to North Carolina in the middle of shooting 100 day hotel showdown for HGTV. It's a competition show, which I said I'd never do again, but this one's fun. It's for charity. Okay. Um, Brian and Mika, who are the stars of 100 day dream home have picked two hotels in like the beachy area of North Carolina and they're competing against each other with all sorts of HGTV talent. I'm on Team Brian. I am shooting and making over one particular space in the hotel and competing against the other team that's doing the same mock-up in their hotel. So we're head-to-head -head every episode, and then there's an overall winner, and the winner, they're... Is that, team, that, that's still being filmed right now? It is being filmed, yes. And I you have just to, got back. You have to design a hotel? Yeah, I designed... That's cool. ...a space in the hotel, yeah. 
So we have to meet and go, okay, what's the overall hotel That's plan? Fun. And then each of our individual spaces we design. Yeah. And then what about Reno My Rental? So Reno My Rental is on, it's, 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 we got one season. We have not heard back on if it's coming back or not. So I'd imagine it's not coming back since it's been two, three years now. Yeah. Um, I would love for it to come back. It did amazingly, but like right now, the when network is When they still are in. calling you an HGTV star and they're putting you on their yes, show. So it's obviously. Me, yes. And I, I like, so I'm in the middle of shooting one production. I guest starred on Hometown Takeover last year and working on another huge HGTV project, which is their Urban Oasis house that they give away. So I'm designing it and oh, shooting wow. a series <laughs> for that project. So definitely You're just in the mix constantly the, on yes. HGTV. Part of the HGTV family for sure. Yes. And then in terms of do you miss the old job? The clients and the doing this and doing that I, or do you now just love TV? I love what comes with TV, but TV is very volatile. Like you can't depend on it. You can't hang your hat on it. Like from inception to production, even by the time you're done producing it, there's still a chance it never may show up on television. But you're set up now. The, you, the, like, the brand has been developed true. to a, right? That is true. I did have to step away from taking clients because there was so much going on with TV and then brand partnerships and lots of travel. But this year I have brought back and opened my books. Like I shouldn't say this out loud, but I have over 300 people on my waiting list that have been <laughs> waiting on me to come back. Wow. And I'm opening my books up this year to get back to what I used to do, which is servicing You clients. are going to. I am. I am. Which is insane. Back to the roots. But the back price the is going up, Doriana! Yesterday's price is not today's price. The price is going up. There you go. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Shout out Fedro. You sure you still want me to design your house? Right. I am hiring. We're growing the team to take on this influx of Oh, and then needs. you can be the boss yes. and you can oversee. Indeed, I can delegate. I'm oh, overseeing and delegating. Oh, she's about to build yes. an empire, boys. Hey, we empire is on the way. Yeah. It's already in the works. All right, yes. so look, I hate to be flippant about this, but that's a lot of interior design, a lot of TV. Uh -huh. There's no way you've been hooping, Carmion. So... You know, There's no way. Hey, she got the J's on, bro. She ready, saw, to go. she ready to go. I wasn't I saw, stepping foot on the forum premises without my J's on, okay? Yeah, yeah. I played middle school, high school, AAU. I was always great at it. Never really had a true passion for the game. Just naturally great. Picked up a ball in seventh grade. I thought I was going to be a cheerleader. I was in gymnastics for the five years leading up to seventh grade and couldn't be a cheerleader in seventh grade. You could only hey, be a cheerleader Carmel, in eighth We've grade. all got old war stories, too. I we know. all used to be good. I None know. of us are good. However. <laughs> however. However. However, picking up a ball for the first time you make varsity straight out of the gate, you don't lose it. You oh. don't lose it. Wait, you okay, wait, time out. Time out, okay. So we it. talking about, okay, we, if we, like, we lost compare <laughs> you to a player, what player are we comparing you to when you go out there? What player are you, are like, you a pass for his to? point guard? Are you a scorer? So I am, facilitator? A, I am a forward. Okay. I am a small forward, technically small. I was a large forward in high school. Um, I'm 5'8", so I'm James. fairly, fairly tall for a girl. Um, but I, I love you know, the inner perimeter, the free throw line. I'm a, I'm a, I, I play to my strengths. Like, oh, okay. I can bang if I have to, but when these you long find out you're playing in the celebrity game, oh, yeah. You immediately well, well, went and picked up a ball. Uh, so, sort of, but no, not really. Like, I had great intentions to, but, you know, life, be life in sometimes like i've i've been shooting tv shows that's what i said yeah, all yeah, kinds of things. yeah so but are you properly prepared for this evening's events the only thing that makes me nervous is the length of my nails right now yeah. again you don't lose it but the last time i shot around was a couple months ago at tom lee park 
Shout out to Tomley Park, like amazing park. The jumper still works. Awesome. The jumper is awesome. like the form is perfection. I mean, you can go uh, to my social media and see it. Uh, I, we will, locked I will in. actually we share. Locked in. I will share some evidence today. I mean, I shoot around. I shot around at uh, at a pool house, like barefoot in a swimming pool. Oh well, not in a swimming pool. In my swimming suit. With sunglasses on. Hooping. Uh, uh, so you might be my MVP pick tonight, then. Hey, put your money on me. Okay. Hold on. I'm leaving here with something. Because we, 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 we got you. I'm leaving with shot attempts and makes. Because we got you. We got NLE Chopper out there who's yeah. going to shoot a lot. Yes, yes he we will. We got Anthony, Anthony Miller, who's an athlete. Uh-huh. Yeah. Kia Shine, not really a hooper, but he got size. Ashley uh-huh. Shields, who Ashley played in the Shields, WNBA. Who played in the WNBA. Ashley is a skilled So player, out of this group. Sure. We we putting our, our our pick on you. Say hey. less. I'm with it. I'm with so it. when I score, I want to come back here. Able to, she says she can hoop. I want to come back here. Yeah, and you, t- and you can do a post game interview. You're talking like you can hoop. <laughs> say, say less. <laughs> we can't wait. <laughs> Halftime tonight. We tapped in. <laughs> I'm tapped in. We win. Check her out on HGTV, but more importantly, you can check her out at halftime of the Grizzlies game against the Charlotte Hornets tonight. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. This is great. Awesome. Uh, thank you to Jessica Benson. Yeah, thank you to Gary Parrish. Thank you to Devin Walker. I got, John Roser across the glass. I got some news for you before we go. Let me hear it. Injury report came out. Desmond Bain doubtful. That means he'll be back. Saturday. Yeah. Oh. That means we'll get Jaron back. We'll get Dez back. We'll get Vince back on Saturday for the rematch. OKC, okay, we want the smoke. Oh. Yeah, D- Taylor said Desmond Bain is coming back. Yeah, Des is going to come back. And that he's close and that he's 5-on-5. Five five and he said, it sounds like maybe those last, like, 10 games of the season, we may really have Desmond, Jaron, and Brandon Clark yeah. all back in the lineup, cool. which would be crazy. It's cool. Oh yeah. God. Real oh, games. Necessary. Awesome. So hard. We'll be back. I know. (laughs) We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, we go on. (laughs) 